Hello, everyone, and welcome back to AI for 2021. We have an amazing presentation coming, and I'm really excited about this one personally. Please welcome Hakima from the Southwest Research Institute to the virtual stage. Welcome, Hakima. Thank you, Daniel. Uh, hi, everyone. My name is Hakima Ibaludun. I'm a program manager in the Intelligence Systems Division at Southwest Research Institute. Um, so at, at Swery, I'm responsible for the long-term business strategy and financial performance of the metrology group. And I'm also leading the medical diagnostic and prognostic um, business area where, where the focus is of this program area has been on research that uses machine learning, deep learning to change the way we treat patients. But so let me share my screen. Uh, okay, so um, as a start, uh, before I can dive in into and talk about uh, some of the work we've done in the medical space, um, I'd like to um, talk to you about Southwest Research Institute and who we are. Um, so. So some facts about Southwest Research Institute. Um, we are her, her Suarez headquarters are in San Antonio, Texas. And it's one of the oldest and largest independent nonprofit organization, applied, uh, supplied research and development organization in the US. Uh, it's one of the largest. And we were funded in 1947. So our fund founder, Tom Slick Jr. was very wealthy uh, as a young man, Tom Slick had a big vision and founding a, uh, an institute for to benefit humankind. Um, so he had a very large vision. He wanted to see science greatly benefit society. So at that time, he founded four different institutes, which two uh, of them exist today, uh, us, Southwest Research Institute and the Texas Biomed was like right um, next door to us. Um, SWERI provides uh, contract research and development services to industrial and government uh, clients in the US and abroad. Um, as you can see here in this picture, it's a, a, a picture of a campus today and, um, and in the early 1950s. So you can see the growth there. Um, it's a pretty amazing campus to, uh, to work. And uh, we have about 2,800 employees. Uh, it, and it lies uh, over a uh, 12, um, 1,280 acres. We have about 2.2 million square feet of lab and offices. And um, so we're, we're a research and development problem solvers. Uh, we offer a broad range of technical expertise and, um, and and here you see um, some numbers on that slide that we're pretty proud of. Um, so uh, we have also facilities worldwide, um, but those offices are are there for to help specific customers. For example, we have a uh, an office in Boulder, Colorado that that houses a lot of our uh, uh, space and science division. Um, so, um, this is uh, where we see ourselves in the technology spectrum. Uh, we are applied research, with, but it doesn't mean that we don't do fundamental research. We, we do sometimes, especially if we have partners we work with, uh, sometimes it goes into production, but we don't, we don't really manufacture things um, in, in mass. Uh, we do in some cases, but it's, it's only if it's highly specialized product and in small quantity. Um, that, that's not typically the type of work we, we're interested in doing. So our goal is, is to bridge the gap of what we call the, the valley of death. Um, so this is sometimes um, something we, we really pride proud of, and, and we have a lot of connections with universities, national lab, and, and also industry. So our goal is really to help people take that fundamental research um, and, and say that it's possible to do this and, and uh, get, it to, uh, get it to the industry. 
So we we help we, we have tendency to help our clients uh, do things that they've never done before, and and they, they, they pay us to do the the, the hard problems. Um, most of our project are commercials. And, and we do smaller amount, uh, our government and subcontract. Uh, Four percent is our internal research, which uh, means that we take uh, what we uh, call our profit and recycle it into our uh, research program, which is a really um, neat things about the Institute. And, and we are able to really uh, do some of the work that we're really interested in doing. Um, it's a wonderful program for our staff. Uh, we use it to develop proof of concept for uh, technologies that our customer needs. Um, and and um, so we have also a pretty liberal IP and usually we develop for a particular customer then they own it. If we develop for a particular customer, then they own the work. Uh, so anyway, our, our IR program is great, and that's the, the benefit of having no stakeholder. Uh, we spend our profit back on ourselves and enable to explore new business areas, and such, such as the uh, medical diagnostic and prognostic business area. That, that's how we were able to uh, get um, do more research in that area. Uh, so we, we like to say that we conduct, so we have seven, um, about uh, seven technical divisions um, and these were our technical divisions, but we like to say that we conduct, conduct research from deep sea to deep, to deep space um, and everything in between. So uh, an example of, of deep sea um, project that we've done is we manufactured here at Swery, the famous Elven submarine that is used that, that is used to do the exploration. We have about 50 year relationship with Alvin and we recently did an upgrade of the submarine. So that, that's pretty amazing that um, it, it, is that Swery has the ability to simulate pressure that, that you can experience at the bottom of the ocean and we're able to do that here. We have the facilities to do that here. Um, another example of, of deep space exploration, we developed the instrumentation on the New Horizon uh, spacecraft that anal analyzed uh, Pluton's making. Um, that, that got us the best data from Pluton and that we've ever had. Uh, actually, the chief scientist of this mission work at, at uh, Swery, his name is Alvin Stern, and he's a planetary scientist, and he's the biggest advocate to, uh, for, for Pluto being a planet. So um, another thing, most recently, a group of engineers and scientists uh, in our space science uh, group, um, group built uh, Cygnus, like a spacecraft that, that will, um, will be able to predict hurricane intensity. And it's been, um, it, it was in the news. So some of those things, some of those projects were pretty proud to talk about because those are the things that are in the news and, and a lot of time, a lot of the work we do, we can't really um, talk about it. Uh, and I said, we do and everything in between. Uh, yeah, our, our team of scientists and engineers work on uh, projects spanning from deep sea to deep space and everything in between, which includes like automotive, transportation, biomedical, health, chemistry, uh, material, defense, security, electronics, automation, energy, environment, manufacturing, and construction. <clears throat> so now um, let me talk to you about the intelligence systems division. That's the division that I've been uh, working on um, for um, the past five years. Um, with, I've been at the Institute for 16 years but I was in another division first. Um, a lot of the background that, um, that, that, that I'm gonna show you today um, come from our perception systems work um, and, and men vehicle. We've been doing AI for uh, more than a decade now. And something we've been doing more and more is taking in those recent years is taking that expertise in artificial intelligence to solve problems in the biomedical space. And um, these are um, some things that we've done um, in 
that that in the um, in the health uh, in medical space. Uh, this slide is about uh, the breast path to challenge that we've participated, and our success in this challenge launched a lot of the work that we're currently doing in digital pathology at Southwest Research Institute. Um, it was a international. Uh, grand challenge in medical imaging where we won first, first place. We developed a, um, an AI-based algorithm that takes image extracted from a whole slide uh, image to predict cancer celerity. And our engineers uh, borrowed from our expertise in um, AI and, 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 and men vehicle and robotics and took, took some of that same AI technologies and, um, and working with pathologists here at UT Health Science Center in, in San Antonio, we were able to win that challenge. And um, the top right image, you see the pathology stain slide on the left. And, and next, to it, next to it, you see the neural network interpretation of it where cancer cells are. Um, it's hard to see on that slide how uh, it, it is how big this slide uh, is, but it's very actually it's a very challenging problem for pathologists. It would take them a really really long time to go through this entire slide and make prediction. And we are showing only showing here one slide, and and pathologists are looking at multiple slides every day. Um, so the bottom right video is a real time processing of that entire slide. And you're seeing here the algorithm at work, and, and you can see it's, it's pretty fast. Um, so if another um, uh, example uh, to kind of tell you how big this is, but if you were going to print this out um, as an image, it would be a 70 page long at standard uh, printer resolution. And you would be asking a pathologist to, to be look, looking at every square inch of, of it. Um, and, and each square here, uh, each square inch would be a 512 by 512 image. And there are more than 8,000 of this in a slide image. So if you're asking a pathologist to go through this slide, uh, to go through it slide by slide, frame by frame and patches by patches um, and make prediction, it's going to take a very long time. And, and without even introducing the human error. This is another um, recent uh, work we did um, on automated um, hormone receptor classification. Uh, this is another pathology problem where this time we're looking at humino-histochemistry uh, slides. Um, and uh, this is another project we also collaborated with a pathologist at the UT Health Science Center. And, uh, so, so, for example, here we're looking at estrogen receptor status. Uh, establishing hormone receptor status is a very important step for effectively uh, treating breast cancer. Uh, you can see this, you, you could see this as maybe a, a more of an extension of the work we've done with the breast bath queue that I just showed you in the previous slide. And um, the current scoring system in place. Um, it is called all red scoring, and it asks pathologies to rate the proportion of cells with positive receptor statuses, as well as the intensity of the stain. So what we did here um, is we kind of automated that process um, of counting the cells and classifying the intensity of their response. Uh, so very quickly, uh, without is to just estimating we're able to count all of the cells, determine their status, and then assign an automated, uh, automated score. So what you see in the image, the, the, the trained neural network correctly identifying the individual cells in the estrogen receptor stain tissue um, and represented here by the, the, the green circles. Um, this is, so the, the, currently this is uh, being done by an expert uh, by visually diagnosing, which, natu which is obviously naturally introduces human error. And, and, and really that's another reason why automating that process will ensure better repeatability. So 
Um, this is another small project that we've done uh, with our collaborator at UT Health Science Center uh, to show some of our capability and the simple things, beginning things that can be done um, in, in pathology to, um, that, that can be, uh, that we can do by automating pathology. So that's another uh, project that, uh, another collaborative project that we've done with a professor at um, university, uh, at the University of Texas in San Antonio. And this is a neural, neural segmentation project. Um, Dr. Indartri Ketub's lab, she's, um, is pretty interesting research she's doing. She's growing cells, um, that are taken from a specific patient and then she watches those cell grow and form networks of neurons um, and uses, uses, those, uh, uses it to, to make future prognostic about the health of the brain. Um, so it's, it's very challenging to identify individual cells and it's very difficult to tell where one, uh, one starts and the other uh, one ends and the other one begins in a, in a growing culture. So being able to label them uh, and, and what they're doing is, is currently is labeling them manually and it makes it almost impossible. Um, so we actually work with Dr. Kitchup and created a method of doing this using computer vision. So we created a neural network that correctly identifies different part of the neurons. And you can see um, in this slide, the location of the dendrite, which is in blue, and the other part of the neuron in orange, uh, which is called the nuclei. nuclei. Um, so very quickly, we're able to get these um, very well labeled arrangements of neuron and see um, how they, they developed in time. And now the scientist uses, um, that to, to relate, relate to health. Um, again, that's another small collaborative project that, that we've done um, and that, that shows what can be done um, using computer vision. That's um, uh, another, uh, other things we've done related to uh, cell classification uh, that we're working on. Uh, we are actually now looking at hyperspectral imaging uh, to do cell segmentation. And uh, so we, we also have expertise in designing physical instrumentations, uh, physical instrument. And we've been doing, uh, we've been working with experts across the Institute. And this one actually we've been working with our chemistry uh, division at the Institute. Uh, we, we developed, uh, for this project, we developed a low-cost hyperspectral microscopic system to uh, use in collaboration uh, with their chemist um, to, to support their novel bioreactor system and making it more efficient for manufacturing uh, CAR T cells uh, for fighting cancers. Um, so, so what you see here in this picture uh, it's actually a rough schematic of the bioreactor created by our scientists in our chemistry, uh, chemical engineering division. And this is a very special bioreactor that's used to engineer uh, CAR T cell. And those cells are the ones that are used to fight cancer. Um, the, the, the current method uh, in place is someone has to pull out those cells um, stain them, which, which completely destroys the cells. And, and then you, um, you have to count them to figure out what percentage of the cells were successfully modified. So as you can see, um, you know, ha ha uh, why having an open loop system can be consume time consuming and not very efficient. So a better way to do this is to watch the reaction as it happens and not kill the cells. So we're using the specific technology to help us come up with what the percentage is so we can continue, keep the loop closed and um, so we can speed up the process further. 
uh, other uh, things we've done, so we have uh, various background in our team, uh, and we're not only interested in pursuing things related to images, we've been also working with um, electronic health record data recently, um, and a lot of time it's our collaborators at UT Health Science Center that um, you know, have, have interest and we've been um, you know, collaborating with them in, in um, doing some of the research. Uh, recently, we've been uh, interested in pursuing things with uh, the transplant analysis. We recently did an internal research project that predict liver transplant rates using UNOS data set. And um, where UNOS is a public available database that collects uh, data on every organ, uh, transplant candidate and recipients, uh, recipient and their, their post uh, transplant outcomes. So what, what we did um, is we looked at the literature and what we uh, were seeing again, very, very similar to what we saw where before we did the, the breast fat cue challenge is that the medical field isn't using uh, the, the most cutting edge machine learning techniques. So uh, we decided um, to, to uh, uh, do this project to see what results we get using our expertise in AI and the state of the art compared um, and, and compare our results to others. So um, result we've had is we substantially improve on the state of the art for a 90 day mortality prediction. Uh, or result, um, we got a 84.2% AUC uh, and the previously reported it was 70.3%. So our technical again, team did a great job uh, in sur surpassing the state of the art and we're working right now on a joint publication with the Transplant Center and we're talking to um, investors uh, and, and share, sharing work. Um, we're also working with the Medical College of Wisconsin um, to, to get us more, um, to, to get us internal, um, external funding. Um, all the things we've been doing related to, to this work, we've, um, we're, we're talking to a heart transplant surgeon about extending this work. Um, and um, I mean, certainly predicting graph failure is, is big and now, um, we're, because of this research, we're starting to have meaningful discussions with, with experts and, um, and, and see what, what, can, what still needs to be done in this area. Uh, so um, another thing we've, we, we, uh, we are doing at the Institute is um, in collaboration with their me mechanical engineering division, we launch uh, the Human Performance Initiative, initiative uh, which uses a multidisciplinary approach to understand um, and quantify complex biomechanical and physiological components of physical performance. Um, as part of it, we developed a markless motion capture technology that tracks uh, joint angle and position. And we, all of this work was done using our internal research program. Um, and um, so, uh, yeah, right now, uh, the, the reason we, we started doing this, this work is that marker-based motion capture um, is a well-accepted technology used within the biomechanical research community from basic science to clinical application. And it has become really the gold standard by which human movement is measured. And however, the, the, the uh, traditional systems have limitation and it's not use, easy to use and technical expertise is, is needed. Um, so, uh, and it's very expensive, time consuming, and can you ima imagine having to put uh, all of those markers before you can um, you know, do anything? Um, so we at, at Southwest Research Institute develop a more robust, uh, low cost and, and easy to use um, markerless motion capture system and um, based on, on deep learning conventional uh, neural network. So it's more easy to use, non-invasive, 
And um, actually, we're currently using that system to uh, measure athlete biomechanics during training session um, and use it as a, as a tool to look at performance. Two minute warning. Okay. Um, so we, another thing that we've done um, was to um, expand that work we did um, on the, um, in the uh, Marculus motion capture to health monitoring. Uh, so this project is currently taking our Marculus motion mechanic a technology developed for human and applying it to animals. Um, and, and in this case, it's non-human primates and uh, where we can monitor their behavior, see how fast they're moving and things like that. And this is a collaboration project that we've done with our sister organization, the Texas Biomed Research Institute, which is one of the largest um, uh, primate research uh, uh, center in the US, United States. So, this technology can extract valuable information about the baboon and, and their um, normal outdoor environments. You can see this is the system tracking the baboon. Um, so, and, and with that, I went over a lot of the different projects that we're doing at Southwest Research Institute. Um, so if you have any uh, interest in any of those projects, please don't hesitate to uh, contact me. Here is my email address, my phone number, um, and I'll be really happy to dive in more into uh, your interest and whatever project that I uh, talked about and anything um, that you may be interested about the Institute. Thank you. Thank you. A big virtual round of applause for Akima. Thank you so much for being with us. If you're watching this, go to some networking and we'll see you at the next session.